While Marvel massacres their crosstown rivals at the Cineplex, they've endured many a post-PS3 pooper pounding in the video game format. While Ultimate Alliance, or even the odd movie license title, enjoys periodic upticks in quality, for the most part, ever since the Starcross sale to Activision, the Marvel license has the unbridled allure of the Kotaku swimsuit issue. Consequently, everything's coming up Arkham these days. Marvel's slapdash solution, of course? Fuck it! Make it Spider-Man Arkham Octopus! Spider-Man is the fulfillment of a long-abiding ambition at Insomniac Studios. To shelve the generic-ass hoodie hump and hoedowns of their previous repute, attach themselves to an established superhero license, and crank out the purest distillation of kick-ass comicdom since Rocksteady Arkham their very first asylum. The good news, gang? They goddamn did it! They killed the Giggler! The better news? Now all the shrieking Sony cronies can cease pretending repetitive-ass Infamous was remotely fucking fun. Via con Dios, dipshit! Shits. So how does she work? Well, web up, shitheads, and don that black symbiote salami holster, cause we're going in dry! Combat is indescribably fucking fun when it works, and roughly as enjoyable as moonwalking through a minefield when it doesn't. Here, the Arkham Carbon copy, right on down to the fucking finisher input, might I add, has been incrementally altered to exchange Asylum's emphasis on impossibly permissive counters for dodging like the Dickens. When it actually fucking functions, it evokes the exhilarating sensation of unerring assault acrobatics. When it don't, you're dog shit on a string, errantly pinballing bitches with the grace of Leslie Jones doing bathtub ballet in a greased up body condom. Or as I like to call it, gorillas in the mist. <laughs> While said arachnid acrobatics are a blast, absent a block button, Spider-Man, a literal superhero, feels suspiciously vulnerable in comparison to Batman, ostensibly a regular dude with rich people powers. Look, I'm a radioactive mutant who could lift a car clean over his head. Maybe make me feel like it on occasion, because even when I pull this Cirque de Spidey shit off, it feels like I'm just really good at not being where the bullets are. The dipshittery deepens further still once the obligatory knife guy, shield guy, and for the 50,000th fucking time in a modern AAA game, brutes bound on into this bullshit. Gangsters escape prisoners or demons that must be dispatched not through improvisation, ingenuity, or emergent gameplay, but the same insultingly juvenile, hard fucking wired routines you'll repeat ad astra while dodging harder than Bill Clinton at a draft board. Fun? Sometimes. Functional? Fucking usually. But I've expended more brain power scratching my own ass and was significantly more moved by the experience. The game also happens to be gorgeous, though the damage control cartel's asinine assertion that quote, only trolls say the graphics were gimped at after the first demo, fails to survive a single encounter with one of the many origami pigeons in the game. I've seen higher poly counts on a paper football, maybe dial it the fuck down with a defense force bullshit. But it ain't perfect. Namely, I watched a blind broad parallel park a backhoe more gracefully than Insomniac force-fed these fucking MJ and Miles Morales sneaking segments into the goddamn game. And deny it all you like, it reeks of representational retardation. Thimble deep, sneakifying, one-button bullshit hacking, worse still, this impromptu compulsory metamorphosis from Spider-Mensch to Metal Gear Flaccid decidedly doesn't represent the title splayed across the upper fifth of the fucking game box. What's that, Insomniac? You need a hacking segment? Hey, you know who's a hell of a hacker? Spider-Man! Guess who's a sneaky son of a bitch? You guessed it! Spider-Man! Spiders can sneak, ergo, Spidey can sneak! Does whatever a spider can- It's the third line in the fucking song! So why, apart from Insomniac awkwardly trumpeting their twat credentials, am I jolly and a ginger unarmed across a motherfucking murder factory outwitting a small army of half-retarded riflemen so I can infiltrate the innermost office and swipe right through Tombstone's tit porn? Never mind the improbability of this bullshit, you're telling me the most racist radioactive spider in in history, hauls aboard MJ's memories and sets up a tent in her tit canyon for 58 fucking hours with nary a nibble, but the moment Trayvon lifts a box of Skittles and Arizona iced tea, he takes the top five layers of skin off his forearm. Either this spider subsists exclusively on a diet of Chick-fil-A and Papa John's pizza, or MJ applied her quadruple-plated plot armor this morning. Either way, this black-on-black -black widow violence has got to stop! What emerges regardless is a six-hour ass kicker of a game during which the riskiest thing Peter Parker does is fail to put a case on his fucking smartphone. But these games are all about the unlockables and Spidey has them by the snatch load. Backpacks, suit powers, increasingly goofy gadgets, but wait, you give Spider-Man so many outfit changes he's basically a radioactive Aretha Franklin, but you bounce on the black symbiote suit everyone actually fucking wants? Gorsh! At least you didn't spoil exactly what the next game's gonna be about. That said, I'm not sure this game is quite short enough. Spider-Man is the Ben 
Shapiro of superhero games, shorter than a list of Movie Bob's favorite vegetables, with witticisms credited to just one man, but in fact crafted by a team of thousands. I see ya, Ben. Color me cantankerous, but I lost the faintest bit of faith in Sony's assertion that, quote, Spider-Man is not merely a commercial concern, but a sincere artistic passion product. Oh, about the time my controller shut itself off due to inactivity before the credits could finish thanking Sony Singapore, and leave it to Polygon to parse every pixel of this bullshit so they can piss and whine about the popos being depicted as anything short of a minority murdering, child napping, puppy kicking Nosferatu in a fucking uniform, while rather conveniently missing the omnipresent wokeness on offer from these asshats, from solid gold Fisk Tower lettering to MJ's inner monologue all but asserting the Kingpin wants to make New York great again. Unless the entire prologue was a mass hallucination, Polygon's hit piece is little more than proof in practice that no lighting of the virtue signal will ever be bright enough for the bullshit brigade. I'm still trying to reshape my skull to accommodate the part pooper, insert cranium logic the pumpkin spice swillin' Marx mongers at Polygon had to employ to hang on every hapless word the transparently politicized FBI has fired the fuck off over the last two years, and yet suddenly feign distrust in crime fighting fucking authority figures. Never mind the immutable fucking in fact, that the game opens up with Donald J. Fisk turning the SWAT twats into kingpin cops. Never mind the J. Jonah Limbaugh segments. If a single one of Obama's surrogate sons survives a Skittles purchase, we're suddenly in right-wing fucking fantasy land. Kuchera, sweetie, I have an easier time believing the police are guiltless, immaculate, seraphim-made fucking flesh commissioned by the creator to pluck babies from burning buildings between stints at the soup kitchen than that Polygon possesses the capacity to remain intellectually honest for the 15 fucking seconds required to crank out this clickbait. And speaking of such, the credits repeatedly proclaim ADDITIONAL STORY CREDITS BY DAN ASK ME ABOUT MY MALE FEMINIST AGENDA SLOT. And after enduring hour upon laborious hour of MJ saving herself and Miles' minority powers, golly gee willikers, but I wonder what his creative contribution could have been. But enough slot shaming, the fact is every aspect of being Spider-Man has been rendered here with relative faithfulness. At least on the rare occasions you're actually permitted to play as the titular character. Wall crawling is crisp, Spidey sense is a god send, when it isn't obscured by shaky cam, cinematic sparks, and fucking fart clouds long enough for you to actually see it, and while Web Sling is just fine in previous Spidey installments here, it's been elevated to a truly soaring experience. Spider-Man, Sony logo or not, fucking rules. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed. <laughs>